Well, patients with recurrent miscarriage are obviously devastated when they come to the clinic. It's a very upsetting uh, problem to have, and they're very anxious about why they're miscarrying, what can be done to help them avoid another pregnancy being lost. Um, the way to think of the problem simply is sort of the chicken or the egg. Is the embryo itself failing, or is the uterine environment causing the embryo to fail? And when we do testing, we focus on those two compartments. As far as the embryos go, um, most often they fail due to chromosomal or genetic abnormalities. And we can investigate this in two ways. First, we can draw a blood test on the male and female to determine if their chromosomes are normal. If they carry a chromosomal rearrangement like a translocation, then we already have our answer. That's probably why they're miscarrying. If their chromosomes are normal, it's still true the embryos could spontaneously develop chromosomal errors particularly as the woman gets older. As her eggs get older, they're more at risk for chromosomal errors. And so we can actually do in vitro fertilization and test the embryos for chromosomal mistakes before we put the embryo back. That's a procedure we developed here in Colorado. And if we're putting back an embryo that we already know is genetically normal, the chance of it going to term in a healthy uterus is extremely high. On the other hand, if we determine the embryos are fine, and it's the environment that is at issue, we check the structure of the uterus. We can do what's called hysteroscopy and ultrasound to make sure the uterus isn't malformed or doesn't suffer from fibroid tumors, scar tissue, or other defects that anatomically don't allow it to carry a baby. Secondly, <clears throat> we can look at adequate hormone levels that are necessary to prepare the uterus for implantation, such as progesterone and estrogen. We can look at the thyroid function of the patient because that can affect miscarriage. We can look at the immune system because there are certain autoimmune disorders where literally the woman's immune system is attacking an embryo instead of the bad guys like a bacteria or a virus, and there's blood testing for that. And then finally, in some patients, their blood is, if you will, thicker and more prone to clot. This is often a genetic problem, and that blood clotting disorder can also choke off the blood supply to a baby and cause an early pregnancy loss. And again, that can be screened for in the blood. So these are some of the main causes of miscarriage, both on the uterine side and the embryo side. We can test for these and then counsel the patient as to what's wrong and how do we fix that so their next pregnancy goes full term.